Dinesh, if, if I did that behind your back, you might have a point. You're right here. You have a mic. I asked you a question. Well, answer it. I'll answer it. So, okay. so my argument was, and this is an argument that was basically made by not just by Booker T. Washington and many others. They basically argued that slavery was a transmission belt. It, slavery was evil, and it was terrible for the slaves. But they asked, what about the descendants of slaves who were subsequently born in America as opposed to being born, let's say, in Africa? Uh, uh, Muhammad Ali, when he came back from the rumble in the jungle in Zaire, was asked by a reporter, hey, champ, what did you think of Africa? And he goes, thank God my granddaddy got on that boat. Now, this is Ali being very politically incorrect, but I think making a point that is worth considering. And that is to say that there is great value. We immigrants go through great difficulties to come into the orbit of Western freedom. So this is the complexity of the point I was making, that the slaves in America were worse off, but their descendants born in the orbit of American freedom in a land of opportunity are, in fact, better off. That is unbelievably clear and concise, folks. I would like, I mean, that, you know what? Hearing it that way puts perspective on it. And that could apply to anybody that is escaping tyranny, brutality, famine, um, you know, any kind of uh, human dilemma. And they get a chance to start fresh, to start anew whether it's the first generation or because the first generation made that first step to get out of that situation, to go to someplace, to get to someplace, to get away from that situation. And then the ongoing legacy, the ongoing generations will then benefit because they were starting in a place where those situations, those problems don't exist, at least not to the, not to the, you know, not to the, you know, the, you know, the amount of, uh, 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 you know, problems that were there in the past. Brilliantly put, brilliantly put. So there's another point I want to get to here, which is, uh, Dinesh, you, you have a movie um, that you put out, I think, in 20... I'm glad you put that in context, by the way. <laughs> Be I'm sure the slaves were so thankful. You, you made a cogent point there. I said that congratulations you've been put in the orbit of freedom ironically through slavery hundreds of years of slavery that is a curious orbit of freedom don't worry though your great grandkids one day might be free after I whip you I own you I kill you I separate your family I rape your wife after all that your great grandkids might be in the orbit of freedom why thank you so much and every single black person, every single immigrant that came over here or anywhere around the world that escaped whatever it was that they escaped from or, like I said, slavery, they were brought over here. You're talking about generation after generation after generation. That's why many people say, hey, don't call me African-American. I don't want to be called African-American. They say that a lot of African, a lot of black people say African-American is a derogatory term. It triggers them. And what do we hear from the left all the time? Oh, you know, don't trigger anybody. You know, it's their feelings. Well, a lot of black people here have a feeling, sank the jank, that they don't want to be called African-American because they have no tie. They were never in Africa. They're Americans. They're black Americans. And if they descended from slaves, okay, so what? Big freaking deal. If you know that you had seven, eight generations ago, okay, Somebody in your family, you know, owned a slave. What is that? Your your descendant, your that that sins of the of the past generations now flow forward to you. What kind of stupidity, idiocy, moronicity, retardedness is that? Sank the jank. So I just finished saying that slavery was a terrible moral crime, and we have to distinguish the slaves from their descendants. I, that's what I did say. You weren't listening because you've trained your ear to jump before you think. Oh! <laughs> Take down! Point goes to 
Dinesh again. I'm telling you what, folks. He is absolutely, every single time, sink bloviates, Dinesh puts it, you know, he just hits it right spot on. Spot on. And Seng just has to go through these theatrics to try to see if he can, you know, through his buffoonery, basically, and blubbery, blub, 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 you know, hopefully he's getting, you know, some claps from, his, you know, the, his followers in the audience or whatever. And even those are tepid responses at best. Hey, you guys want to... You guys want to do a poll of African-Americans in this country and ask them if uh, they should thank white people for slavery? How do you think that poll comes out, Dinesh? I don't think anyone has ever said that. Okay, but no, no, today they are the descendants who have been brought into the orbit of freedom. They so were, according to your they logic, were, they should be incredibly thankful. They were, Let's they do were, a poll. Let's hold, find out. Hold on a do second. you really believe these things, Dinesh? Thanks. Or are you trying to get paid by right-wing guys who are paying you to say this nonsense? Thank there are penniless Irish driven out by the potato famine who came, who came starving to America. Their lives were actually, in many senses, worse. But their descendants, born here now in America, obviously enjoy freedoms that their ancestors didn't have. So I don't understand why you are... I mean, I don't know if you're being vile or being stupid, but it looks to me like you're, it's some, it's some bizarre combination of the two. You refuse to try to understand what I'm saying. No, I think I got it. You got it. Yes. I think you got it. Uh, and, At least and to the so degree you can. Let me ask you about another book you wrote where you said that 9-11 was because of Planned Parenthood, Nancy Pelosi, and Brokeback Mountain. Really? Really? That's what I said? Yes. yes. And that you it can was, clarify. Go ahead, clarify. That's what you have a mic for. Sure. Go for it, big guy. Yeah. How about it, boss? So in my book, The Enemy at Home, in my book, The Enemy at Home, I raise the question of when you look at the propaganda of the radical Muslims, what are the themes that they emphasize to recruit on the Arab street? And I said, you see foreign policy in there, you see Palestine, you see Saudi Arabia, but many of these guys aren't in Palestine or Saudi Arabia, they're in Pakistan, they're in Egypt. So what attracts them to the radical Muslim cause? I said, this whole notion of America as the great Satan is, a, is an attempt to capitalize on the values of Hollywood that are projected abroad. Now, here, here we have to realize we're not just talking about radical Muslims. Throughout Asia today, there is a slogan that's gathering currency. It's called modernization, yes, westernization, no. And this is traditional people all over the world who want Western technology and they want constitutional rights and they want democracy, but they don't like what they see as some of the more shameless aspects of Western culture shoved down their throats. This is a real issue worldwide. Look at the recent case in Orlando. If anyone thinks that I have not, there's no merit to this, just read the book. He doesn't read books. What he does, <laughs> he makes these one-sentence summaries. I don't read his books. There's a big difference. That's right. You don't read them, but you talk about them. You don't read them, but you talk about them because someone gave you the one-sentence summary. All right. Um, Have you watched every one of my shows? No. How dare you? Don't talk about anything I said. All right, let's move I on to... I haven't talked about your shows. All right, by the way, you just said, yeah.